Okay, so here's what I'm working on at present. Um, this is, of course, the screen coming from my slideshow computer down there. And the way I had this set up is I had the one drive for boot booting, and then a separate drive for the slideshows. And this is a check disk on the slideshow drive, which, if you remember the video that I shot of that computer, which was long ago now, but I put a 1.6 gigabyte Western Digital, what was that? It was a Caviar 31600. It's a three platter 1.6 gigabyte drive. IDE old school drive. It was from my uh, Pentium 120 system way back in the day. Never had a problem with that drive, but apparently my luck has run out because we're having issues. I wonder if you'd be able to hear this if I stick the camera up to the computer. Actually, it's probably not doing anything now because it's gotten to a point now where it's not having problems. Yeah, it looks like it's going to a point now where we're not having any issues. Well, the hard drive light is still on constant. Not that you'd be able to see it because then it's being drowned out. But I don't hear anything now. It was making some noise a second ago. I'll probably splice that into the video. I wonder if you would be able to hear it if I stuck the camera up to the computer. I mean, I could hear it from here. Just Yep, it's having trouble. But anyways. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to recover all of that, and then I'm going to go find a drive that I can replace, put in here to replace that fallen one with. So that's going to be fun. i got to take all this stuff out of here. Most of it's easy enough, but the computer that's sitting on top of it, that might be a little difficult. And those power supplies, I don't know if they'll fit somewhere else. But fortunately, I have this facing to the point where it's not a BTX system, so I can just pull all that stuff off of it and pull the cover and replace it in place. I don't have to pull the computer out or anything heinous like that. So we'll see what I can dig up in my parts bin. Okay, so this was the first thing I pulled out of my box. It's a Quantum Fireball TM. As best as I remember it, this drive has got a couple of issues, but we'll see. What I'm going to do is, once that's done its check disk procedure, I'm going to copy all of the data off of it using this USB drive right here. I'm going to put all the put all the files into this thumb drive, and then I'm going to swap the drives. That sounds like the easiest thing to do to me. I really do need to do something about that cable mess down here. I don't think I'll, I'll ever be able to do something about that though. I think all of these cables are necessary. So, yeah, but there is certainly junk over here that needs to move. That shouldn't be too hard. Most of that's not stuff that's going to take too long to move elsewhere. But anyways, first I got to wait for check disk to finish because I'm not going to stop this and risk any data corruption. So. Make a noise again. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that over all the fan noise. I can't see it right from I don't know if the camera will pick that up. I can only barely hear it, so. Okay, we are now transferring files. It says it's going to take 17 minutes. I think I would frankly be shocked if it took 17 minutes. You know, there's too many wires in the way, so I can't get the side panel out, so hopefully that isn't going to defy too much gravity. Uh, but the transfer is still going on. This is the drive in question, by the way, if you're wondering. That particular unit. I'm not sure if you'll be able to read the label. Oh, well, maybe if I get some focus on it. There we go. It's a little unfortunate that this that that drive had to fail because it does have a little bit of personal value. I probably shouldn't have used it, but like I said, I think when I put the computer together, 
stuff really is put into this world so it can get used, not so it can sit in a box for years and years and years and years and years, like that drive has. That's probably why it's developed so many bad spots, is because it just That's has Jimmy never been used. I got uh, a show on that I forgot about, so... It's kind of a little loud. I probably should turn that down, but... I guess I'll stop this before I get my video muted. But you know, it really is funny how this works out, because I was actually going to be updating slideshows today, and I was going to, you know, just so I could look back and, you know, keep a copy of them before I updated all of them to be, you know, present, I was going to make a backup of all of them. Well, it looks like I won't really have to do that now because I'm making a backup of it anyways. Really is funny how these things work out sometimes. It's just too bad that the drive had to fail in order for this to happen. Although even then, I don't know if I'd say that the drive has failed, per se. It's just got a couple of bad sectors on it. And hopefully, you know, maybe maybe a, a trip to Spinrit will get that all fixed. You know, it's certainly possible. Although that drive predates, you know, it predates smart data and it predates having spare sectors, I believe. So probably not. Bad spots are probably bad spots forever. They'll just have to be marked off and ignored by the operating system whenever that's used. All right, looks like everything is good. So no data loss. That's what I like to see. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing down. And pull the drive out. Okay, so let's see how how well I can do this. And off it goes. I don't know if this thing has got a switch on the back for the power, not that it would really matter. You know what? I don't, I don't really care that much. So we'll just pull it out live. Yeah, I kind of uh, did a little number on my finger last night. Not that you'll be able to see that. Okay, how am I going to pull this stupid thing out of here? I don't remember how it went in. Because I need two hands, one to pull that up, and one to pull the drive out. Looks like... Okay, good. I won't have to get out my Torx head driver in order to do this, because it actually has a flathead portion, so... Let me get that out and the old drive, or the new drive hooked up. If you're looking for these screws, this is what you need. It could be black or silver, I suppose it doesn't really matter, although the black ones are cooler looking at least. And the one thing about these, let's see if I can get some focus, is that they are Torx threaded, but at least HP was smart enough to have a flat blade notch in it as well, so that makes my life easier. There are four of them, and they are of the special type so that they can be toolless. I suppose you could try and use normal screws. I've never ever done that, so I don't know if it works, but I really don't... I don't condone that. Use only genuine replacement parts. <laughs> and I'm starting to sound like IBM. Okay, so obviously I had to grab a different drive here because the uh, the Quantum doesn't have standard drive mounts. You know, the st standard size screw holes, so these screws wouldn't actually fit. They were a little bit too small. That was interesting. I thought those would have been standardized by the time that Quantum was made, but evidently not. So we're going to try and put this in with the camera rolling. I don't know if I'm going to be successful, however. Don't fall, camera. I hope this drive works. This one was made in Singapore just like the other ones, so it should be okay. The drives that were made in Malaysia were problematic. I remember this. I think the I think actually the Western Digital Caviar 31600 was a recalled drive at one point. That doesn't look like it's in place. And finally that drive is installed after an almost Herculean effort. Somebody at HP deserves to be fired and unemployable after designing this case because that is the first time I have ever not been able to put a hard drive into a computer with a toolless design system. Wow, that was terrible. I had to remove all of the cabling just to install a hard drive. That's terrible. Never had to do that before, but I guess with HP, that's 
That's a design feature, not a bug. If you could tell I'm a little annoyed by having to do that, well, you're right. That was certainly a little annoying. Hope my drive still works. But we'll find out together, live. Well, it still posts, at least, or... Yeah, the drive posts. It's an interesting way to put it. Okay. The following configuration options were automatically updated. Look good to me. Where's the keyboard? We'll press F1 to save those changes. And it'll reboot. Or it'll boot into Windows. Oh no, it'll reboot. Okay. Now it'll boot into Windows. So I'm gonna have to format that and do all of that now. That shouldn't be too difficult anyways. So I think that's going to work fine. So I'm gonna put the side panel back on and I'll get the studio back to where it should be and then we'll do all of that. Okay, so the drive is in place, like you heard. It's a little bit louder of a drive, but I think I can get used to that. Because it's an unknown condition, I'm going to run a full format on the drive. So we'll see how long that takes and how, if it passes or if I'm gonna have to pull all that back off again. Sounds a little different, but that's because it's a two platter drive as opposed to a three platter drive like the other unit. Like I said, it's also a little louder. And now it's time to make the transfer happen. Okay, paste. And we'll see just how long that takes. Of course, I'm not copying over, and there were actually some, there was a ripped CD and a copy of a CD in there. So I'm not going to obviously copy those back over because I don't have to. They serve no purpose on a slideshow computer. So this should take a little bit less time. And of course this is a working hard drive so it might even stand a chance that it's a little faster. And it would also stand a chance that it's a little faster because it's actually a newer drive. So maybe it's employing a newer ATA standard. A little bit faster. I think the old drive may have been ATA 33, this may be 66. But I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me. I'm probably completely wrong. I've never been big on figuring out what a to what ATA standards a hard drive is held to. As long as they work, I really don't care. Okay, so that process is now done. All those files are there. So I have some work to do with that. I'm not going to shut the computer off, but I think this video is going to come to a close. But before I leave, I want to show you something about this old drive. Anybody remember that logo right there? Except only the finest. Yeah, there was a time when Western Digital was the best in the business. They were also the most expensive. Those days are gone. Well, not quite. Western Digital is still one of the better manufacturers but they're certainly not the most expensive anymore. Of course, hard drives these days are downright cheap anyways. I'm waiting for SSDs to come down in price, and that's when I can truly say that the hard drive is done. And the capacity of SSDs needs to really, really come up in order to make them a beneficial purchase for me. But for now, I guess I'm going to continue buying hard drives. Here's a little interesting sidebar. I recognize that label... No, actually, sorry, no, that's, I'm thinking of the, something else. This was actually, I, th I thought that this was made in uh, 90, 95. The copyright date on the board is 1995, but it looks like this one was actually made in 96. Uh, it seems to have been sold in November of 1996. And actually, well, no, I can't quite remember that. That was, uh... That was before, that was at, that, well, bleh. let me see if I can say this. That was, that happened before, you know, my memory cutoff point is. But I do remember that system being around in the, uh, the old house that we lived in. So, I never really used it. I had my own, I had a PCXT that I started on. That was in 98. 
I think that was in 98. I say 99 because I really started fully using it in 99, but I can remember using that computer in that old house, and I think we moved out of that old house sometime in the beginning of 1999, so... Yeah, well, anyways, another sidebar. Unfor it's unfortunate this drive doesn't work. Maybe it's perfectly fine and it just needs some prodding in order to get it to do what it needs, but I, I think I'm going to put it in the bag and I'm going to put it away and I'm going to close this project. So, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.